Hey everyone, Wags here from Eagle Dynamics. In this DCS F16C Viper video, we'll discuss the basic operations of the AN AAQ 33 Advanced Targeting Pod or ATP in this video. While we've had a targeting pod for a Viper for quite some time, it does have some inaccuracies and it was more of a mashup between a lantern and lightning pod, but we'll continue to offer this with our Viper. The ATP, however, is quite accurate and based on a U.S. Viper circa 2007. While much of the ATP will have commonality with our existing targeting pod, it does have distinct differences like multi-track target, TV and infrared picture-in-picture, -picture, extended range image processing, an infrared pointer, and more advanced air-to-air -air features. In later videos, we'll review these more advanced features. Let's get started. All right, so first, let's take a look at how we activate the ATP from a cold to dark jet. Now, obviously, it's not a 100% uh, cold to dark. We've got the engine running, but we'll do just the uh, bare minimums to get the ATP up and running. So first, coming down here to the avionics power control head, we'll enable MFC, stations, MFD, UFC. We're going to hold off on the mids in the GPS and set the INS switch to stored heading. Coming up to the sensor uh, power control head, we'll enable the radar altimeter, the fire control radar, or FCR. And because the ATP is attached to the uh, right uh, chin point, we're going to go ahead and enable the uh, right hard point power. Get some symbology up on the HUD. Master caution off. And we can see our alignment at uh, 73. It's going to take a little bit, so let's go ahead and uh, skip ahead a bit, and we'll come right back. Okay, and almost there. 10. We got flashing ready. So now we'll set the INS switch to nav. And now we can set the, uh, the mids to on as well as the uh, GPS, not before alignment. Stop her back. And we're going to zoom into the uh, left display. And we can select any of the OSBs on the bottom here. Let's say the FCR one. And we're going to go to OSB 19, a targeting pod or TGP. Select that. And now we have the standby uh, screen for the TGP. You can see it's not timed out. It's going to take about uh, 11 minutes or so to uh, fully run the uh, iBit or the internal bit. You can see the percentage of completion is at four, so plenty of time to make a ham and cheese sandwich. Uh, like before, let's uh, cut away for a second. I'll come right back once we're closer to 100% uh, bit test completion. Okay. Almost there, 98, 99, 100. Okay, I bet complete. This one, we see we have a uh, not SOI or sensor of interest. So we're gonna go display management switch down on the stick. Make that our SOI. At the top here at uh, OSB one, we have standby. We're gonna press that. And now we have the uh, options to go to air-to-air -air mode or air-to-ground mode. Let's go to air-to-ground mode first. Do a cursor zero. And we're ready to go. Okay, so at this point, let's go ahead and jump ahead and we'll get airborne. And take a look at some of the basic functionality. All right, so welcome to uh, northern Iraq. We are northeast of Mosul with our central point of interest, our SPI, over Mosul airfield. Uh, you can see that we have uh, Mark 82 selected. They are in CCRP mode. And of course, we got the ATP up on the left display. Uh, let's zoom in now and we'll talk about the basic functionality of the display. Okay, to get started, let's start at the top at OSB1 where we see AEG for air to ground mode. If we press uh, OSB1, we can select our master mode. So air to air master mode at OSB20 air to ground which already selected osb6 and standby osb10 we'll stick with air to ground mode for now to the right of that we have ptr and that stands for the infrared pointer and as you might imagine the infrared pointer allows you to emit a infrared beam from the targeting pod to the center of the crosshair location now what's important to remember is that because it's an infrared beam you're only going to see it when you're donning the night vision goggles. You're not going to see it 
through the infrared camera in the ATP, whether it's black hot or white hot. And we'll take a look at this in operation actually in the next video at night. But for now, we can talk about how you enable and disable it. We can do it through two ways. Uh, first, through the OSB by pressing OSB2. And we do that, we can see PTR in reverse video. We have these perpendicular lines at the ends of the crosshairs, and we have PTR down here in the bottom right corner. Press it again to disable it. A more handy way to do it is through the HOTAS. And to do that, we're simply going to press the target management switch to the right twice rapidly. So you can see it's enabled, do it again, and disable. And again, in the next video, we'll take a look at this section in operation. Uh, below that, we have the coordinates of where the crosshairs are pointed, as well as the elevation feet. And we're also going to see uh, sometimes LQ, MQ, and HQ, and that stands for low, medium, or high quality of the confidence of those coordinates and elevation. To the right of that, we have the uh, field of view. Right now, it's in the TV camera in wide. Now, what's kind of weird about this is that with the TV camera, when it's in wide mode, it's actually using the infrared camera. But there's two different ways we can select the field of view, and the results are actually different. One's through the OSB and one's through the HOTAS. Uh, first, using the OSB, if we press it once, we go to TV, picture, and picture. And as you can see, in the center, we have a TV image at a higher magnification of the infrared image around the periphery. We press it again. Now we're in TV narrow mode. Press it again. Now we're in TV narrow mode, but in XR or extended range. And we're going to talk about XR in more detail actually in the next video. Press it once more, and now we cycle back to TV in wide mode, which again, on intuitively, it's going to be an infrared camera. Now, in addition to the OSBs, we can also use uh, the HOTAS, which is the expand field of view button. But when we do this, we're actually going to lose the XR options. So we press once to go from TV wide, TV picture and picture, picture and picture to TV narrow, and one more time, we cycle back. Uh, right below that, we see a small diamond. That's our situational awareness cue. And just like the previous uh, targeting pod, it shows you where the target pod lo is looking. So if the cue is well in front of the crosshairs, it means that uh, the targeting pod is looking ahead. If it's to the right of the crosshairs, it means the crosshair is looking to the right. And the closer the cue is to the center of the crosshairs, the more steeper the look angle down is. So, for example, if the cue is in the center of the crosshairs, then the targeting pod is looking directly straight down. Right below that, we see 1.0x, and that's our dynamic zoom. And we can adjust that with a manual range cage uncage knob. So this will actually go up to 4x. To the right of that, we have our override, just like the old targeting pod. And to the right of that, OSB 16, we have the control page, but we're gonna come back to this at the end of this video. Right next to it, we have our elevation uh, and radar feet. And then right by that, we have our north arrow and ground. Next, at OSB 6, we can change the camera. Uh, right now, we're in the TV camera, but we can press OSB 6 and go to infrared white hot, infrared black hot, then circle back to TV. Now, just like we've seen before, we also have HOTAS options. And to change the camera, we can use the target management switch, again, the TMIS, by going short press to the left. So TV, white hot, black hot, and back to TV. Let's go back to inf infrared camera. And again, we also have the different field of view options, which will differ between selecting as an OSB or selecting through the HOTAS. So right now we're in infrared wide. We press OSB3, we go to infrared wide, XR. Press again, now we're infrared narrow. One more time, infrared narrow, XR. And one more time, and we're back to wide. And again, just like we saw with the TV, we can also use the expand field of view button, but we're gonna lose the XR options so press once to narrow, press again, back to wide. And there's no XR option at that point. Let's go back to the TV camera. 
Uh, below that, we have the polarity track. So we have neutral track, white track, black track. Below that, we have a snowplow, which will work in, if I believe it's the CCRP LAD uh, DTOS. It's not going to work in CCIP. Remember that if you're in CCIP mode, uh, the camera is always going to be looking at the CCIP impact point. Below that, we have CZ for cursor zero, which when pressed, it will remove any offset of the targeting pod. And then at the very bottom, we have our sighting select point for VIP or VRP. The bottom right corner, we have two lines. Now, the top line is estimated time to go to the cursor location. And the bottom line will appear if you're carrying a laser guided bomb, the estimated time will be when you reach that location. To the left of that is our laser information. It'll either be combat, CMBT, or training, and laser code. But we're going to take a look at this in the, uh, the next video. At the bottom left corner, we have the range, which is currently 14 miles at the crosshair location. And this can be preceded by a letter, either an L for laser, if the range is less than 8 miles, an E for estimated range, or a T for high confidence. Along the left side, at uh, OSB 18, we have MT for multi-track, which we'll talk about in the next video. And the same thing for OSB 20 for laser spot track or LST, which will also be the subject for the next video. Now, of course, in the center display, we have the crosshairs with the narrow field of view corner markers, indicating the area that when we go to a narrow field of view of what we'll be seeing. So you notice there's no corner markers. Go back up to wide. Now we see the corner markers that indicated the narrow field of view area. Of course, to the right of that, we see 133, which is the meter stick. And that indicates the ground distance length of the rightmost crosshair across the ground. So this area right here is approximately 133 meters. Next, let's take a look at the different tracking types. Uh, the first is a point track, which is super useful for a moving target or even a static target as long as it's not too big and has good contrast. And to do that, all we have to do is wait for the target to be in the center of the crosshairs, press forward along on the TMIT switch, and then release to initiate the track. So pressing forward, release, and now I have a track. And we can see TV point, track, here at the bottom, we have a bounty box around the target that we're tracking. The only big limitation on this is going to be much more range limited compared to area and INR track, generally around 8 to 10 miles. To get rid of the track, all we have to do is slew off it. And notice when we do that, we automatically went into an area track. Actually, let me go to an INR very quickly. Zoom back out. So we have a line of aircraft over here and let's say I want to make this an area track will actually create uh, the area track based on the scene not a point target and to initiate an area track all we have to do is press the team and switch short to the right when we do that we can now see we have an area track the last is an INR track or inertial track and this is really handy to uh, track a target if it's uh, behind uh, cover or even more so if you're tracking a target and it gets masked or it gambles off to allow the ATP to get back onto the target much more accurately. So to initiate an INR track, all we have to do is press the team switch to the right long for more than one second. And there we go. So those are the three different tracking types. We also have the ability to adjust both our TV camera and infrared camera by using the brightness rocker as well as the contrast rocker. And don't be shy about using these as often the automatic uh, settings for brightness and contrast can be off a bit. I also mentioned that we have the control page at OSB 5. Let's take a look at that now. So at the top at OSB 20, we have a grayscale, which we can use to calibrate our image. Below that, we can filter out the north arrow meter stick and coordinates at OSB 19. Below that, we have options for either automatic gain control or AGC or manual gain control MGC. But this only applies to the infrared camera, not the TV camera. And when we're in MGC, we can manually adjust the infrared level as well as the gain.
Moving over to OSB6, we can actually remove the TV or add it to a valid camera to select. You can also adjust the focal length at OSB7 by selecting OSB7 and then using the slew switch either forward or aft to adjust the focal length. And those are the highlights of the basic functions of the ATP. There's a lot more coming, you know, such as the multi-track, XR processing, uh, Maverick handoff, and other items, but we'll save that for the next video. Uh, until then, take care, and I will see you next time. Thanks.